Hello again, it's Benjamin Schumann here. Um, today we're talking again about reinforcement learning. This is the second part of a four-part video series about implementing reinforcement learning into any logic. Now, in the past video, I just talked broadly about reinforcement learning. What is it actually? What's it used for? And why is simulation so important for it? Today, I want to introduce you to the simulation example model that I built and show you how I did it to just build a technology demonstrator. So we're going to look at the model uh, from, from a top view. I will show you how it's set up, what it is actually doing. And in the next video, we're going to look into the individual parts of the model, uh, a more technical look. And then in the fourth video, we're going to go right deep into the actual algorithms and all that stuff. So let's have a look. The model you already saw it briefly in the background in the last video is essentially, let me pause it right there, it's a square world. It's a world full of individual cells that have different characteristics, as you can see. And we have a little truck in there. Now, the goal of the model is to start the truck in a random location and let him find the best way towards a random target location. So currently the truck was randomly selected to start here and all he has to do is basically find the way here, which looks fairly trivial. Now the way reinforcement learning works is in this most basic implementation of reinforcement learning, just explore your landscape randomly until you hit your target. And while you do that random exp uh, uh, exploration, you get reinforcements. You either get penalties or rewards. So let's have a look at this guy. This truck is essentially randomly walking across the landscape. So he's jumping from cell to cell. And every time he's at a new cell, he makes a random decision to go to the next cell. He can obviously not go onto any of the wall cells. He cannot leave our little cell world. And at some point, maybe now, no, not, not yet. Oh, let me pause there. So you saw it very briefly, he actually found the target there. And what happened was he got a huge reward for finding the target. And that reward is tied to if you are on this cell and make the upper move, you get a huge reward because that's a really good move if you're on this cell. So this is marked with a big fat green bar. And what you'll see is as time moves on, all these other bars are very thin red lines saying, let's pick one out. If you're on this cell, for example, and you, oh, sorry. I went into the wrong thing there. If you are, let's close that again. If you're in this cell and you want to go to this cell, it's not a good idea because you don't reach your target. So it's a thin red line yet. So the magic about reinforcement learning is that you do this journey, this random journey many, many, many times. And whenever you hit your target again, you will get your reward. The cool thing is that it's uh, backwards feeding. So let's wait a little bit until he finds the target again. Maybe now, maybe now. Well, not yet. Well, actually, I mean, it's a simulation model. So what we can do is we can just speed things up a little bit until he's done. It's a little difficult this time around because this target is really, really hidden for, for a random walk, but he's going to find it. So let me speed up a little bit more. So now he's found it several times. Now let's stop because now you can see things are happening, right? There is something going on. There's not just one big green bar anymore. There are several. And the reason for that is the following. Every time this truck is on a cell and wants to make a decision of where to go next during the training phase, he basically evaluates each possible cell where he can go. So what if I go to this cell, for example, but not only that, he also makes a what if I am at that cell and would go to any other possible cell, what would be my reward? And he picks the one future cell where he would get the highest reward and actually discounts that a little bit and feeds it into the pathway that he would do first. And what that means is, for example, if you're in this cell and you're contemplating of going to this cell, he's then 
also contemplating what would happen if I go to this cell and th then go to this cell and then he gets a huge reward. He's being told, well, if you do that, you get a huge reward. So he's backfeeding this reward also to this movement, but with a little discount. So now he knows if I'm here, it's quite a good decision to go here because then it's going to be an even better decision to go there. And if you look this, if you let this run over time, you will see this network sort of growing and the, the line colors are changing. And what you can see is he's basically building an understanding of his little toy world and where best to move from any location. So now he knows if he's here, well, I should probably best go move here. And if he's here, I should best move here and so on and so on and so on. And he finds his way. And if you let this do many, many times, he will have charted the entire environment and knows best how to get to the target destination from any place, actually. So let's fast forward a little bit. He's now done this a hundred times and has a pretty good understanding of reality, of his reality. And now we can basically, we are at the end of the training phase and now we can actually use the model. We could put him in any location into the environment now and say, go find the perfect path. But we're going to put them, put him into his initial location that he used for the training as well. And we can just say, go follow your perfect path. And what the model is doing is just counting how many steps did it take you there. So just to reinforce this, let's start again with a different map and fast forward. So now he's starting down here, trying to find his way. And if you fast forward a lot, you can see how the thing builds up over time. And what we can also do in the model, and I'll show you in, in future videos how that's actually done, we can change a few parameters. There's something called the Bellman discount factor, which basically says how much do you feed back to, to subsequent movements um, of, of your learning. You can increase the number of walls. You can increase or decrease the number of learning passes. So let's have a few more walls to make this a little more difficult. And then start the whole thing again. And you can see no matter how you set up the environment, this algorithm will always find a way, unless of course the target is completely locked in uh, from a wall. So it's got to be logically consistent. So I hope this explains conceptually how reinforcement learning works in this model. Just to point out there are various algorithms that help you do implement uh, reinforcement learning. And we are using the simple most possible way, uh, which is uh, a Bellman, Bellman equation with a Q factor, it's a professional name, and we'll learn how that's implemented in the next and the video after the next one. Thanks a lot.